And so I want to teach you guys two things today. Um, they're really simple exercises. And the name of this talk was um, uh, how you can polish user experience um, with and without users. And that's a really important concept right there because user experience design is all about how people actually use something or hold something. In my case, I work with mobile a lot and phones, and so the way people even hold their phone and walk around with it, that's really important to me. Um, so I want to know a lot of things about how people do things. So the first exercise that I'm going to teach you guys is actually a writing exercise. Um, I actually think that writing is a really, really important part of just coming up with ideas. And so this writing exercise, a friend of mine, her name is Jennifer Brooks, she used to work in the New York Times, she taught this to me. Um, do we have a little marker or something? Okay, um, in the meantime, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about the uh, exercise. It's called the Four Lists of Words. I don't really have a better name for it right now. Um, and what you're supposed to do is you think of the thing that you want to make, right? If you want to make something that is for uh, real estate, we heard one of the presenters uh, or people pitching about their ideas, it was about real estate. And so if that's something that you want to make uh, uh, an app for or software for or whatever, um, you would follow this exercise for that particular topic. So the four lists are pain, pleasure, context. And context, that just means time and place. And uh, the last one is behaviors or actions, and those are just verbs. So if real estate is the thing that we're making something about, or what's something more fun than real estate? Game, we, we heard an educational game. So if educational games, maybe, that's like the, the super topic that we have. We're gonna write down words, phrases, anecdotes, anything like personal experiences under each one of these lists is all about education and games. So you take pain, pleasure, context, and behaviors, and you write down as many different kind of uh, ideas that you have in your head about those things. That's hopefully going to reveal some of the nuances that user experience design is good at solving. When you, uh, um, one of my favorite books actually about this topic is uh, from someone named Aaron Walker. It's called Designing for Emotion. And when we talk about great UX, it usually means that it's aware of the way people feel or what they're doing or, um, you know, things that, that, that make it feel more like a human interaction as opposed to a computer interaction, if that makes sense. So, by writing out all these different words and phrases, we can start to come up with things like copywriting for error messages, and when error messages even need to occur when we're creating our product. So, um, I'll, I'll say for educational games, someone uh, shout out something that is a painful experience with educational games or education and games. Someone shout something out. What is it? Say it, Matt. Give me a really, truly painful experience with math. Something like, like, really think it out. Is it just math? It can't be math in general, right? Give me a personal experience, an anecdote or a story or something. With math without numbers. Math without numbers. I, I, I still need more like personal, like, like really get in touch with what is painful about math with numbers. What is it? Not knowing why something's wrong. Not knowing why something's wrong. Great. Perfect. So that's a potential point where someone could get really sad or mad about the thing that they're working on. And so when you kind of come up with these really detailed examples of what's either painful, pleasurable, uh, aware of our time, and so we'll talk about the other two in a minute, but painful and pleasurable are ones where we can start to say, hey, it looks like you're having trouble assessing this. Let me you know, help you out. And so that's a feature, that's a design idea, and that's a whole development process that needs to go along with understanding how correct someone is, whether or not they've input that they need help, whether or not we just know like, for a fact that this is a really difficult problem and they're probably going to need help at certain points. Developers can even do a lot of this work on their own by understanding and watching for moments when people sign off or they quit or they close something and they aggregate all of these kinds of inf information together to find moments where you need to address error messages. Error messages are a really boring part, but that's one of the greatest things that uh, a usability uh, designer or someone concerned with usability is going to be looking for. Um, so that was pain. Uh, what is another topic that someone's pitching an idea or is interested in? Or maybe we should just stick with educational games since we only have probably 15 more minutes. Okay. Um, pleasure. 
you think my time? Okay. All right. Uh, good, good experience with education or games. Educational games or any kind of game. It's a good experience. Learning something new. Cool. Okay, so what does the system need to know to understand that this is new to a user or not, right? So when you start to think about profile pages or how a person exists in your app, it's good for you to know if this is a new topic for them or an old topic for them. And it's such a simple distinction, right? But that's what, the system, that's what you need to design into a system. And that's how you're going to have a better experience when you know someone's pain points, pleasure points, etc. So the other two that are really important, and they're really important for mobile, and that's where I do a lot of work, is uh, the behaviors that people do, and then the contexts. So again, times and places. And so when I think of educational games, what are the times and places that someone uh, thinks of with an educational game? Someone we haven't heard from yet, yeah? At school, obviously, kids are, uh, that's what they have to do all day long, is, is uh, deal with education, and hopefully sometimes in games, maybe not. Um, what were you going to say? Same thing, it's school, obviously. So, if that's the time and the place, what are the conditions in, in, in a school that you have to meet for this thing to actually be successful? You don't want to take away attention for, or get a kid in trouble or things like that. So, notifications, if mobile is something that you're really interested in, notifications are a really interesting part of, of mobile. And if you send a notification and it, and it alerts to someone's phone, and, or you know, be it a teacher or a, or a student, I don't know if students have phones in classes, they, do they? No, they don't, that's good. Hopefully that, that never happens. I hope uh, 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 wireless would never go in the subway, but I think that's going to happen. Then. Uh, so phones in the classroom would be bad. And notifications during class time would also be pretty ineffective, right? So when is a good time to send a notification to a uh, student? After school. After school, perfect. And uh, uh, so, so these are things that we can understand when we start to write out and list out really personal and, you know, uh, you know, just good, rich stories and anecdotes about um, a topic, be it pain, pleasure, uh, or context. Now, the last one, behaviors, are some of the more uh, difficult things to uh, understand because they're very abstract. Because you'll have a behavior like learning. That's, a, that's something that happens in educational games, obviously, right? But learning is a really, really complex topic, and uh, it's one that I'm really interested in. But as far as you list out all of the different things that and actions and things like that that people go through, you can start to get really detailed with those as well. So receiving grades for evaluation, um, receiving uh, maybe feedback throughout a course, um, and you kind of you kind of do place it in the context a little bit, but there's still these verbs and there's these things that need to happen, and sometimes you can tie those with the pain points and the pleasure points. So getting something wrong, which is an action of sorts could be directly tied to a pain point, and you realize you know, some of the things that you need to create or focus on, or spend more time on, when you, when you see that they're really connected to painful situations, or, or if they're pleasurable ones, that's where you can think of some of the more fun stuff to do, or uh, uh, exciting design elements. A lot of what I end up doing with these lists of words, anyway, is copywriting, so figuring out how to write messaging or calls to action, and then on top of that, um, prioritization of my time. So how much time do I want, do I have in a week? I've got seven days. I don't like to work past 5 p.m., let alone 3 p.m. And um, so I'll, I know that I work best in the morning. And that's when I'll, ta I'll tackle some of the really painful ones or really pleasurable moments when I'm creating a new topic or whatever it is the problem that I'm working on, right? So that's the four list of words. Okay, the last one.
linear meaning it's straight, it doesn't like branch off and stuff like that. And so what they need to, what we're, what we're looking for is all the things that happen in that task. If I go to my phone right now, this is the one that I always like to point out. Who here uses Spotify? Who here uses Spotify? Does anyone have anything saved so they can listen to it offline? Yeah? Anyone have anything saved so you can listen to it offline? Yeah. No, maybe it's not right yet. Okay, good. So, in Spotify, there's a, there's a really uh, direct, linear way to save something, to listen to it offline, right? Um, there's more than one, but uh, that doesn't mean that we have to map them all with all these branches. We want to pick out each and every single one, starting with the beginning and ending of the end, right? So, when I open up Spotify, I end up on a home page, and I have to tap something, right? I'm going to tap the menu button. And the mini button looks like this. So here are the two things that you need to know right now to, to go home and do this. You can do this on a, on a, on a napkin or a crayon and something, or, or a napkin and a piece of paper, whatever, whatever you need. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to map out all of the pages that I see and all of the decisions that I make. Right? So boxes are pages, diamonds are decisions. And as we move through this, now I'm going to be on the menu page right after this. Right? Question. Is it a more comprehensive um, version of a site map? No, a site map is something that kind of gives you, it's like a map where it shows you everything. So if I was looking at a map of Long Island City, I would see everything there. This is just a linear task. It involves decision points, um, and we want to break them up so they're not, uh, but that's a really good question. I often get that question. Uh, but, uh, so it, like, the difference then, a site map kind of shows you every single page, like a big map, versus a path through that map, right? Okay, so um, now I'm on the menu page, and let's see. So I've opened the menu. Now I have some options, and I'm gonna. And, and now the user could do any kind of thing with it. It's happy anywhere, but I want to show just what it takes to save an album for offline listening. Save for offline. Okay, so I'm on the menu, and now I tap search because I'm going to I'm going to search for the album that I want, and now I'm on the search page. Right? So I tap the search. I'm on the search page. Okay, bonus question. What happened between each one of these pages? Other than my decision. What happened? Other than my decision. What's the data was saved? Data was saved, so there's background processes that happen, right? What else happens that the user might see? Transition animation, exactly. So you have these kinds of moments that tell you things. So we can start to use more than just pages and diamonds to talk about the flow chart. We can use, um, honestly, we can use any language we want as long as we give it a, a key. You know what a key or a legend is, right? <clears throat> so if box is page, diamond is a user interaction or a decision, right? Then we might have uh, a dotted diamond or something like that. It's a little bit harder to make for a, uh, a computer decision, right? There's my drawing of a computer. Even though I call myself a UX designer, I am a horrible designer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then a circle will be like a transition animation. There we go, transition animations. Animation is one of my favorite topics to think about with mobile because what's the difference between print and digital? Motion, right? It's one of the biggest differences. And then with all that motion that you have there, that's a whole new medium for describing and telling things. Like the transition animation for searching something might might be, I don't know, these are these are really interesting, petty ideas that, that I spend a lot of time thinking about and are very complex. I'm not gonna be the one to say that I know anything about them, because it means because that would be so cool. How could anyone know anything about something? Um, anyway, so we're gonna continue along with this thing, and we're gonna look at all the different moments that some of the uh, uh, designers with products similar to ours or our own. So in my job, often I have to do redesigns. So I'll look at the existing thing, and I'll kind of map out everything about it. And then I know that there are some competitors that do things kind of like me. So if I'm Spotify, I might look at how iTunes Match works, or what are some other music services? Pandora. Pardon? Song. Pandora. Pandora, Sansa. Um, there's so many. See, and if you guys want to go out and make the next music now, Learning from your competitors and learning from like the place that people have already come from by mapping out all these things very simply is going to be a, a way that you can do these things without users. 
Now, when you do it with users, and you see that this is the way that, that, that it's going to be done, and there's multiple ways that it can be done, you want to find out which ones are the trends that people are using most, and like, search. So that's the way that I would try to find my album. But some people might already have, they might have other ways of finding it. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, uh, in user studies, when I'm with users, watching them save an album for offline listening, um, they'll do it in ways that I never expected. And I'll, and I'll kind of try to point out, like, here's where people have the most amount of problems. And so maybe a better transition animation, maybe better loading times is the issue. So data transfer is what I'm thinking about. Then that's where I know that work needs to get done. Again, it's almost all about prioritization of where you spend your time and where you what you work. So user flows, and then the um, so I'll just say, um, user flows, and then the four list of work. Those are the two exercises that I think that you can go out and do right now. You can do them with users and without users, both of them. Um, for the four lists of words, I'd like to uh, ask my whole team to you know if we're working on so recently we're working on a, a video uh, app. Yahoo, it's called Yahoo Screen. You can download it. Um, it's an app that I work on. And um, it's all about like short two minute clips of video. And so that was kind of our overarching theme of topic, was these short clips of video. And so we did our four lists of words pain, pleasure, context, just times and stuff, and then behaviors. And we listed all of these things out. And that's how we think about new ideas or where users might be having problems. And then when I bring users to interview, I'll have them do the exact same thing to see if. Maybe we're just thinking in a bubble, which 25-year-old white 